Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chinese Grandeur, a webinar brought to you by Architectural Adventures. My name is Hasti Hijazi. I'm Director of Global Innovation Education at the American Institute of Architects, and I'll be conducting today's webinar. This webinar is in regards to the Chinese Grandeur itinerary that will be occurring on October 7th through the 22nd in 2017. The subject matter expert who will be leading this trip is Professor Ming Hu, who is with us today. We'll be talking with her about each day of the itinerary. Before we get started, I wanted to go through just a few PowerPoint slides regarding architectural adventures and our tours. So Architectural Adventures is the official travel program of the American Institute of Architects. We specialize in the exploration and appreciation of the world's architecture. Our tours are small group tours that are led by subject matter experts that we have um, selected for the program. They go well beyond simple sightseeing, really providing the educational value for our travelers. They're definitely not just for AIA members or architects. They are for architectural enthusiasts. So anyone with an interest in architecture and uh, an interest in learning more about the architecture and getting an education va educational value from um, travel are invited on these programs. For AIA members, they are eligible for learning units. So if you are a member or need continuing education for your state licensure board, all of our itineraries are eligible for learning units. The Chinese Grander Itinerary will be up, available up to 36 learning units. So the approach uh, to our travel provides an opportunity for our participants to travel with like-minded individuals who are also interested in learning about architecture specifically. You'll receive educational guidance and commentary, and you'll also have an opportunity to participate in special excursions. You'll gain exclusive behind-the-scenes access and get insider knowledge to popular sites, as well as lesser-known architecture. As I mentioned, the architectural expert who will be leading this trip is Professor Ming Hu. Ming is a professor of architecture at the University of Maryland. Ming, thank you so much for being with us today. And if you don't mind, if you can just uh, provide a little bit more information, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure, uh, my pleasure. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ming Hu and I will be your travel companion on this trip. Uh, a little bit, just a little bit about myself. Um, currently, I'm a system professor in University of Maryland. Um, I got my five-year professional bachelor degree in China and my first master degree, three-year master degree in China as well, with a specialty in historic preservation. Um, so I do have a lot of uh, great memory and experience in traditional historic uh, Chinese architecture. After graduating from uh, Tsinghua University uh, with my first master degree, I came here to States to study. Uh, I got my second master degree from University of Notre Dame, which uh, has a focus on again, traditional and classical architecture, but different kind, Western traditional classical architecture. Uh, so um, before, I, before I joined Maryland, switched to a full-time teaching position. I have worked in different firms for a little over 10 years, and the latest firm, the longest firm I worked for is the HOK Washington DC office. So I want to say I'm both educator and also practitioner. Um, and also I think I am, I can see myself as a child of architecture, at least a child of architects. My father is architect, practicing architect and also professor in architecture school. And my brother and a couple of my cousins are all teaching architecture in China right now. So hopefully I can share with all of you my passion, love, or opinions about Chinese architecture. 
Ming, wonderful. Thank you so much. We're very lucky to have you as the architectural expert for this trip. So thank you so much for not only leading the trip, but giving us a little preview and glimpse into the itinerary today. So with that, I'm going to take the audience through um, a number of slides that will depict and give you a little bit of a visual preview into what you can expect to see on each day of the Architectural Adventures Chinese Grander Trip. So day one and two, this is where you're going to be departing your gateway city. Our travelers will arrive in Beijing, get situated in the hotel, and get comfortable. And we will actually start um, our official touring day on day three, which will be the Temple of Heaven as the highlight. And this will be Monday, October 9th. So Ming, this is such an amazing image that we should all see on our screens. What can you tell us about the Temple of Heaven and what we can expect to see on this day? Sure, sure. Uh, before I go into the details about this particular building, just want to set up a tone, basic tone, uh, to help all of you to understand uh, the Chinese architecture and its relationship to Chinese culture. Um, China is a pretty big country, just like the United States. Uh, so as you can imagine, there is a lot of different subculture in China, and all we call the layered culture. And if we have to categorize the architecture based on those different subcultures, we can divide or categorize the architecture and subculture into imperial culture, which is tied tied to this, uh, this kind of uh, formal buildings, temples, tombs, and the forbidden city, which you are going to see a little bit later. Um, this is a, a first imperial culture. Uh, tied to the formal architecture. Um, the second uh, is the scholar culture tied to the garden city, which you will also see during the trip. The last category is um, craftsman's culture tied to the vernacular culture. So having said those, uh, uh, this, uh, having explaining and tell you those three different subculture, what you're seeing on the screen, the Temple of the Heaven, and also the next slide you are seeing, the mausoleum, the formal mausoleum, a perfect example of this kind of imperial culture. And uh, the Temple of Heaven is basically built and designed based on the cosmo uh, cosmologic belief rooted in traditional uh, Chinese culture. Um, so when you're on the site, you will understand the shape, the layout, the position of this particular uh, culture is all related to um, the symbol of uh, the cosmology, uh, which I hope um, all of you will get to see on the site. Wonderful. We can, we can advance, yeah. Um, so this is the mean tombs and the great wall again. Uh, it's a very formal uh, setting and very uh, the layout and the curve and also the entire site setting reflect uh, reflect the imperial culture, which really presents the power uh, of the uh, the power of the ruling family at, the, at that time, and later on, the main tomb has been uh, turned into the tourist the garden. It's like a huge garden site for the regular people to uh, look at those artifacts. Um, and uh, there's a lot of background the stories go with the, the stone uh, sculptures which you can see on the screen. Um, if you uh, decide to go on the tour, I can point out one by one to explain what exactly those animals uh, 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 represent and the, what kind of cosmology star this animal relate to. Wonderful, Ming. And we'll be say, seeing the, the Great Wall of China um, on this day. Can you tell us just a little bit of background on the Great Wall? Uh, the Great Wall was viewed as a defense mechanism uh, starting from the Qing Dynasty. So uh, the, 
I think the Great Wall might be one of the one of the greatest architectural structure known to uh, Western world. Uh, and but as uh, if we a, we think Great Wall, if we look at the Great Wall from the design uh, perspective, the Great Wall essentially is the boundary of the current pro. Uh, Hubei province, which is defined the imperial the imperial kingdom back in Ming Dynasty. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the image of the Great Wall uh, from the movies or from the pictures. I think the most uh, interesting for me is the tectonics of building the Great Wall, the materials used uh, uh, building the Great Wall. Um, not, not only just the, uh, the brick, but also um, the brick wall the, was built use the gluten rice, uh, pretty much function as the modern motor uh, in the masonry construction nowadays. Great, thank you for that. So on day five, our travelers are going to be visiting the Forbidden City and the Summer Palace. What can you tell us about this day? What will we be seeing? Mm. Forbidden City, uh, there are so many things you will see. Uh, till today, I'm still amazed by the scale of the Forbidden City um, and also the level of the details uh, of the city. So basically, Forbidden City is the inner city occupied by the imperial family. Um, in the Philippine city, you will see two major components. The first is the public room, which is used by the uh, used by the uh, king uh, emperor at that time, and used as official uh, place to conduct business, meaning listen to the captains and making big decisions. So this is a formal room. And the Forbidden City also has a, a private room used by the imperial family. Um, if you look at uh, the map, um, what you see on the screen is the formal, the biggest, and the center uh, palace in the, it, located in the center of the entire Forbidden City. And at the left side, uh, the west side of this in, uh, formal access, uh, you will find those private uh, around private space. Um, you will see the really dramatic contrast between those two uh, portions in terms of the size of the building, uh, the decoration of the building, and even some of architectural language used in the, the private versus the public building. So basically, it will show you uh, both sides, the powerful and the formal side, as well as the private and intimate side of uh, the traditional architecture. Great. So then that takes us to day six, central Beijing. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to visit Beijing. What can you tell us about what our travelers can expect to see and do in Beijing? Right. Busy. Very busy and uh, crowded, and uh, you will see lots, lots of uh, newer and modern building. You also will find some really cozy and uh, interesting small-scale hutong, traditional hutong building, all mingled and all blended together. Um, and all uh, what you see on the screen. Uh, is uh, I think a lot of people might recognize this is uh, the major facility built for the 2008 Olympic uh, Beijing Olympic uh, uh, game, um, and there are a lot of uh, interesting story behind how this design concept come to uh, uh, has been approved and criticized or approved uh, at the end, um, and also of uh, the the original designer of this stadium claimed they take the inspiration from the traditional building's lattice decoration um, and give it a little bit different interpretation. Interpretation. So this is what you see on the screen right now. 
Um, in the central Beijing, and uh, uh, you will also find a lot of interesting business district. Uh, a lot of uh, modern, smaller scale building, unlike the one you see on the screen, was built to mimic the traditional hood home uh, building and give you a fitting, to try to give you a fitting of those traditional uh, lifestyle. Okay, so day seven is the Pinyo Old Town, which looks like a very interesting marketplace. Uh, what can you tell us about the Old Town? Uh, Pinyo is not, uh, um, Pinyo is in a different province. It's in Shanxi province. Um, I think it's by bus, it's about two and a half hour bus drive from central Beijing. Um, I always think about, I think of Pinyo like uh, the Gettysburg in United States. Um, it was very important and critical uh, traditional and little small town. And uh, later on, and nowadays, it's become more or less as a tourist center. Uh, in terms of the scale, Pinyo is a little bit bigger than Gettysburg, but much, much smaller than Beijing. Uh, the uniqueness of the Pinyo Old Town is uh, that Pinyo is the first UNESCO uh, historic city in China. Uh, before Pinyo, uh, multiple small towns or small cities have applied for the UNESCO uh, status. I did not get proof. It's because um, compared to Pinyo, all the other small towns did not have enough or substantial quantity of historic, bu uh, historic building being preserved to a certain level. Uh, so the, 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 the Pinyo as an entire city, as an entire town has been preserved very well. Uh, as you can see on the screen, no matter is the uh, architecture details, uh, as well as uh, the layout, the street scale, uh, the, even the pavement on the street uh, was preserved very well. That's the reason Pinyo is the, the first ever UNESCO uh, proved the historic site in China. It looks like a very vibrant and colorful um, town, so wonderful. The, Ma the Wang Mansion will be on day eight. What can you tell us? about what we'll see here. Hmm. The Wang Mansion is also in Shanxi province. Shanxi province is uh, one of the two provinces in uh, China has most historical building. One in uh, Shanxi province is in the northern China, and uh, the, the second province, uh, Hang, uh, Zhejiang, is in southern China. What you see on the screen right now is literally the entire building complex is literally owned by one family, uh, which is the Wang family. Um, Shanxi province, a bit, besides the, the a really a lot of great um, historical building, Shanxi has also uh, also has another uh, interesting, unique character which uh, we call. Uh, Jin commerce. Um, so the the people uh, back in 200 to 300 years ago, there is a large number of commerce of business rooted and originated in the Sanxi province. Uh, so those uh, businessmen, after they uh, start their business business in this uh, Shanxi province, they went out all across the country. Uh, do the trading and uh, make fortune, and then come back to invest in their hometown. Uh, investment meaning building more and more houses and buildings like this. That's the reason you will see in Shanxi the large and wealthy families own huge building complex. This this could be very well could be a small little town, but again, this is just one family's building complex. Incredible. It does look like a town, doesn't it? <laughs> right. 
So we'll move on to Hangzhou's architectural gems. So what gems can we expect to see on day nine of the itinerary? Okay. Uh, so now we are literally in the southern China. Um, so Shanxi province is facing all, all in the northern China. As you can imagine, uh, the southern China is very different from northern China, just like the southern states are very different from northern states, right? Uh, and, uh, and also, Hangzhou is my mother's hometown. Uh, so there's a lot of good things I can talk about. So basically, this um, what you will see in Hangzhou in southern China is the type of the building I mentioned at the beginning, which tied to the scholar culture, uh, which is less formal, uh, more decorative, and more natural. Uh, so most the building use not only natural materials, natural local materials, and and also most of the traditional building blended with the natural landscape very well. Uh, if you can advance to the next slide, I can talk a little bit more. Yeah. So this is in the center city of Hangzhou, West Lake. The lake you see on the screen is the West Lake. Associated with Hangzhou, associated with West Lake is the tea country. Um, so the, the reason why we call the culture as a scholar culture is that because um, the scholars uh, are the backbone of traditional uh, tradi traditional society. Uh, in the, the ruling family, so basically making the rules, making the, uh, making the regulations for the people, but the, the scholar are actually the local executor to make sure those principles, those regulations have been uh, promoted, uh, are, have, have been promoted and executed very well on the local level. And those type of the people not only has uh, certain influence and power, but also they have to be very knowledgeable. Uh, they have to excel in uh, in literature, in poetry. It has to be excel in a lot of different art art form, like a painting, like singing, like playing instruments. So this is the reason we call this type of people scholar. And the culture associated with this type of people we call scholar culture, uh, because um, the 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 southern China, uh, the city like Hangzhou is a little bit further away from the central government, meaning the city of Beijing. Um, so you you will see the scholar culture. Scholar culture in southern China has uh, more influence. Uh, and this influence also reflected on the architecture style, meaning, again, less formal, uh, smaller, more human scale, and more blended with the natural environment, uh, look like very enjoyable uh, environment, look like very enjoyable garden people can enjoy instead of just using the architecture, uh, showing the power, showing off the power of the government. So this is the major, the consistent thing and the major difference you will find in southern China, in Hangzhou, and a little, a little later in Suzhou and Shanghai as well. Wonderful. So on day 11, we'll be traveling from Hangzhou to Shanghai, and we'll be spending um, some time in Shanghai with the next day being the Towers of Shanghai, and you can see this aerial image on the screen. What can you tell us about Shanghai? Um, Shanghai is really a new city in China. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the, one of the youngest cities in China. It's only about 200, uh, 250 years old. Uh, and also, Shanghai has a lot of Western influence, as you can tell, uh, from the modern building and also from the older building in Shanghai. And one thing I can tell you is, if you are the fans of high, 
uh, skyscraper, super high-rise building, Shanghai is the city to be. And the Shanghai, uh, in fact, is uh, my father's hometown. So uh, again, a lot of good things to see in Shanghai. Wonderful. We'll be going to Suzu on day 13. What can you tell us about Suzu? Mm -hmm. Suzu is uh, the type of scholar, scholar culture cities. So you will see a lot of garden architecture. Uh, you will see a lot of smaller scale uh, buildings. Uh, I, I think uh, you can tell from the image, right? This is definitely different from Shanghai as well as from Beijing. Um, and the Suzhou is known as uh, the Chinese uh, the the Chinese version of Venice because uh, a Suzhou is a really a city built on the waterways, different kind of canals and a different of the rivers. Um, so not only you will see the the water has uh, the the waterscape has been in, has been blended into the garden. Uh, and the, the architecture and courtyard, but also uh, you will see people still using the canal as uh, one means of transportation and a commute, which is quite interesting. And hopefully you can draw kind of a comparison between Suzhou and Venice. On day 14, we'll be visiting Laszlo Hudex, Shanghai. What can you tell us about that? Uh, so this is the Shanghai Grand Theater. Um, was built around 19, 1990s. One of the uh, at that time it was really different. Um, and the inspiration of this building, the, the, the start behind this uh, this building is uh, the inspiration coming from was coming from the hat where by the emperor, you know, the traditional hat whereby the king. Uh, so literally you can see this uh, oh, huge cantilever, the roof curve upwards. Um, and uh, what I can tell you is, is a lot of the, the, the interior looks even more interesting than the exterior. And uh, currently Shanghai is considering building another theater, uh, actually opera house um, and bigger than this one. Day 15, we'll be visiting the Shanghai Museum. What can you tell us about the Shanghai Museum? Yes, um, I'm an architect, so I have to say something about the form of architecture. Uh, inspiration, the idea, the concept of the building is try to mimic uh, the, the traditional uh, wine glass used in Qing Dynasty. Uh, so that you can, so that's the reason you see there's a half round, half circle things, an uh, arch, really just a decoration for really just a decoration function without any actual function. The, the, after the building being finished and complete and opened, uh, there was a lot of criticized about relate to the form, but now it's become a landmark. Uh, the local people get used to the shape. It's kind of a weird shape, and they become very proud of this building. Um, and what I like most about this area is not necessarily all the kind of different building. Actually, are the landscape uh, and the plaza um, and uh, the entire uh, all the multi, multi uh, and the very. Uh, vibrant activity constantly happen on the site. You will see a lot of outdoor performance going on uh, on the site. Wonderful. And that will be our last official day of the itinerary. The afternoon will be uh, our travelers to spend at their leisure before a closing reception and gala dinner. So not only will this itinerary provide um, architectural experience, but also cultural and culinary and social experience for you as well. If you have any questions regarding this itinerary, we invite you to contact 
my colleague, Cindy Linnell at Architectural Adventures. You can reach her at 1-800-293-5725. She'd be happy to talk to you more in depth about the itinerary, logistics, and costs. Before we end, Ming, I wanted to ask you, we've talked about so many different locations in China, and you're so familiar with so many different locations, Shanghai, Beijing, and the provinces. If you had to choose one favorite city or town or place of yours in China, what would it be and why? Uh, it has to be my mother's hometown, uh, Hangzhou, city of Hangzhou. Um, I really like the West Lake and the Tea Country. Um, not only because it's a cultural rich city, cultural rich landscape, but also the entire environment just really calms you down and make you so comfortable. Comfortable, and the the city scale and building scale is so uh, uh, it, it's it's very human in comparison to the Forbidden City, and also the food. It's fantastic in southern China. So this is this is what I can say. Well, Ming, thank you so much for taking the time to give us a preview today. It's a lot of information to get through in 30 minutes. But thank you very much. I think you've whetted all of our appetites for this wonderful trip. Again, any questions, please contact us at Architectural Adventures, and we'll be happy to assist. And I just wanted to uh, give a quick screen of the 2017 trip schedule so you can see that we have a few more trips from Architectural Adventures for the remainder of the year. With that, I will uh, wish you all a great afternoon, and thank you so much, Ming. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hatsi.